Okay, so I think I just started. Um, so this is Rose from the Painted Toad, and um, we're doing a live, or we're doing, I'm doing a live here, and I'm going to be painting some rain clouds. I gotta keep track of the time here. I got a tutor at seven o'clock. So I'm just gonna add in some blue down here. Um, I think I'm gonna try and throw in a little bit of gray as well. So I'm gonna make some gray out of white. I'm just playing around tonight, having some fun with the paint, and we're gonna see what we can do. Um, this is, I call this April showers, and my goal is to get some moody rain clouds along with um, maybe a puddle. And uh, if we have time, we'll do an umbrella and stuff. We might, I might only have enough time for the background. So let's see how quickly I can go here. I'm going to work from the side so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And what I did there is I just mixed, I have this thalocyanin blue, I have a little bit of white, and just a touch of black. I don't want too much black because if I get too much black, then it's going to take over. Black has that tendency to want to do that. It'll just take over your whole painting. So sometimes we don't really want that to happen. I'm going to put a little bit more on there. And I just put all three of these, I'm going to put them on a flat brush. I'm just going back and forth, and I'm going to work my way up into the sky so once again a little bit of white a little bit of black a little of the thalocyanine blue you can see there you can see what that black got but I kind of like that so I can keep it I can blend it in a little bit just doing a quick background here. I'm going to be creating a very moody looking sky. And I want to create some fun clouds up there too. Just get my edges a bit. So I was saying earlier, you know, it's been kind of a rainy, kind of cloudy, cold day. We had so many nice, beautiful, sunny days, and now it's back to like cold. So it just reminds us still so spring, not in summer yet, even though we had a little teaser. It's not quite there yet. But if you're joining me, it's Rose from the Painting Toad. And I am painting a moody, cloudy sky. We're going to do some rain, teach you a couple techniques here. This is just a fun little paint. I'm trying to squeeze it in before I have to uh, tutor. I have a math student at 7. So 7, 7, 3. So if I don't finish, I might pop down back uh, after that um, tutoring session. But we'll see. We'll see how fast I can go. This is just a little 5 by 7. It's nothing huge. These are nice for doing a quick painting. I know I say this all the time, but it's nice for a quick painting or a little test painting. So, you know, I might try something out on this small painting. Try some techniques. And then, you know, if I really like something, I might paint it on a bigger canvas. So there we are. Just kind of getting that back and forth. Oh, I like this already. It's looking like the day. Kind of moody, a little bit gray. Um, this is kind of blue there. So I'm going to just add just a touch of white and just kind of blend that in over the top, lighten that up just a tad. There we go. And I kind of I went thin with the paint here. I'm not doing super thick with the paint. I want it to dry. Um, a little faster so I can paint on top of it but sometimes with this I'll go super thick with the paint and just you know really work the background and have fun with it that way but I'm just adding in color here there we go and see how fast it's just back and forth back and forth back and forth okay so that's kind of our our background color and now we're gonna have some fun making clouds so clouds are lots and lots of fun Ooh, we have a comment here let me see what you said hey Lee <laughs> thanks for joining in yeah um, we are painting 
Um, I'm doing April showers. So I'm going to do, we had kind of a cloudy day today in Michigan. So I'm going to just have some fun making some clouds. Um, and just swirl in the paint. And if I have time, I'm going to show a technique for doing rain. And if I have time after that, we'll do uh, an umbrella. But I might have to pop in later because I have to tutor at 7. So, <laughs> all right. So I've got my background here. And, oh, thank you. Um, and so now I'm going to do some fun with the clouds. So I'm, I'm going to keep the same colors here for my clouds. And this time I'm going to load the paint on rather heavy. Okay, so I did just a thin background here, but for my clouds, I really want to have some fun with swirling the paint, and I'm using a round brush, um, which will be nice for doing some, from, ugh, can't speak, oh my goodness, some, <laughs> some swirls. I'm just adding a little more paint to my palette because I don't want to run out here, and I'm, like I said before, I'm doing the thalocyanine blue, which is just, it's like basically a dark blue. And then I have black, I have white. I might do, I have this dark cobalt violet, so I might try a little purple in there. We'll see. Um, I'm kind of interested to see how that would look, so we could have some fun with that. And you know what? This is acrylic, so if it doesn't work out the way I want it to, then, um, then it will, um, oh, where's my train of thought? Then I'll paint over it, let it dry. Um, Lee, this is a five round. It says five. So, yeah, about a, a size five. And really, for this, it's, this is just a small painting. So, I mean, you could really do anything, um, any size brush. Um, I probably wouldn't do a small liner brush. That wouldn't be big enough. But any size, like maybe a four, five, or six, any of those would be fun. Even a big, fat one would be fun to do. So I've got a little bit of purple on here. I'm going to put some white. I'm going to put some blue. Let's see what this does first before I throw some black in there because I don't want the, the black to uh, take over. And I'm just going to kind of throw, oh, I like that purple in there. A little bit of purple, white, blue. I, I'm afraid if I put black in here, then we're going to get a storm cloud. So um, I'm planning on adding a little, a little person with a umbrella in here and I don't want to you know, I don't want to make it dangerous for that person you shouldn't go out in the storms if it's like thunder and lightning so <laughs> we don't want our clouds to look um, too scary here and I, well, all I'm doing is taking I'm taking the um, the purple a little bit of purple a little bit of white here and a little bit of the blue all three on my brush and then I'm just making some swirls we're gonna swirl it around so swirl, swirl, swirl. Super fun. This is so fun. I love doing clouds like this. Now, you know, if I was doing realistic clouds, you know, there's lots of really cool techniques for that. But a lot of times when I paint, I just want to have fun with it. You know, if I stress too much about trying to get everything perfect, then it's not as enjoyable for me. Um, so just doing these little paintings and playing around it's a great way to discover um, different techniques, different textures and things like that, um, and, and not stress about it. You can just enjoy it. So that's, that's what I like to do. I just like to enjoy the painting process. And if you're just joining me, it's Rose from the Painted Toad, and we are painting, or I am painting, I don't know if you're painting along with me, you could, if you have paints handy. And if you don't, you can always watch this later. Um, I usually upload these to my YouTube page as well. Especially, I, I videotape these because sometimes my connection isn't all that great with, um, with Facebook doing the live. So I always videotape this separately, and that way I can upload um, a nice quality video to YouTube if Facebook is being wonky and, you know, my internet connection isn't doing all that great. All right, so if you look here... I have um, these little swirls coming in the top of my clouds. So there's not a real big difference here between my swirls and my background. And so I, I do want a little bit of a difference. I want to be able to see, um, you know, I want these to pop a little bit more. So there's a couple of things I could do. I could make them darker, or I think I'm going to make them a little bit lighter. And in order to do that, while it's still wet, I'm just going to grab a little bit more white paint if I can get it out of my bottle. 
there we go got this giant bottle of white paint I stopped um, <laughs> skimping I used to get like the little bottles but then I go through white paint so fast like white and black always go so fast because I'm always mixing them with things so I'm like I just I probably need a whole gallon of it but uh, for now we're just gonna do this so I'm taking the white I'm going over my swirls again just to brighten these up my I didn't even wash my brush still dirty just going over those swirls again just to brighten them up, bring them out from the background a little bit. And I'm playing around with this. We'll see how it turns out, you know. And like I said, I may or may not like this. We'll find out. So we'll just do a little bit of this. I could go back, add a touch more blue if I want them to look more blue. Just having some fun with the swirls. Um, a couple of these. Let's see, I'm going to get the centers a little bit better. Let me blend that a little better. Otherwise it's going to look like a bunch of floating donuts in the sky. But that would be an interesting painting. We could do, you know, we could go a little bit surrealist like Salvador Dali, floating donuts. Sometimes it's fun to do things like that. I don't know if you've ever um, seen or you if you've heard of Georgia O'Keeffe. So she's really well known for her giant flower paintings. She was, uh, um, or she almost lived to be like, I think she lived to be almost 100, or maybe she was 100. But um, she's a well-known Southwest artist, but she didn't start in the Southwest. She actually started in New York. And um, mostly known for her flowers, but she also did all of these beautiful cloud paintings um, of the southwest sky like the desert sky so she did lots of these gorgeous cloud paintings and her cloud paintings you know um, they're kind of surrealistic they're not these you know um, it's not like a super realistic and she would just kind of she would do they were huge she would just do a huge canvas of blue and then all of these um, almost rectangular clouds all over the canvas Look it up sometime, Georgia O'Keeffe cloud paintings, and you can see her, her style. So, you know, you can't really say that clouds have to look this way. They don't have to look any way. You can make them look any way you want. And my little clouds here are little poofy cotton ball round clouds, and it's kind of fun. I like the way they look. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to add some rain. Let me check my time here. All right, we're still doing good. So I'm going to use a flat brush here, and honestly, I'm not sure, I think this looks like a one inch, I'll hold it up in a minute so you can see. Just rinsing that off, because I'm going to be adding white. So if I have a little blue in it, it's fine, because we're going over the background. So I guess it looks like, well, maybe a three quarter inch. That looks like a three quarter inch to me. I don't think this one is, oh it is, oh, look at that, I was perfectly right, it is a three quarter inch. Aha! Talk about the correct estimation. This is why I tutor math, because I can estimate. <laughs> okay, before my head gets too big, let's, uh, let's talk about how we can do some rain. So there's a couple different ways we could do rain. Um, we could do like single little drops of rain, where it's just kind of like, you know, um, doing little drops. Or... Um, if I want more of a downpour or something like that, that's that's the technique I think I want to try. And so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to get a little more white because the white, it, well, I might be able to use this little bit here. All right, so I'm going to dip my flat brush. Oop, I can see some water dripping down. Make sure it's dry. Nothing like a big drop of water to come in and mess up your painting. It's not the end of the world. It's just annoying. And I'm just going to dip the tip of this brush in the white paint. And then I'm going to do um, this technique called dry brushing. So instead of taking this white paint and going right thick on here, um, I don't want big, fat, thick white lines. So what I'm going to try instead is I'm going to take my brush and get most of it off. I put most of it in my palette. I don't know if you can see that or not. But anyways, you just have to trust me. Just believe me. So I dipped it in the white and then I brushed some of it off onto the palette. Actually, here I'll show you like this because I got the brown paper. So look at the brown paper. I'm going to brush most of it off because I don't want it real thick. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mostly dry brush, it's almost dry, and I'm going to 
create some lines coming down like this. So you can see there's a little bit of paint on the brush to get these streaks. And that's, that's what I'm going for. So once again, I'm going to dip it in the white. I'm going to kind of get most of it off. I don't want too much on there. And then I'm going to just take that dry brush and go on an angle here. And I'm trying to get it to look like streaks of rain. So I don't know how well that's showing up on the uh, video there, but that's what it's that's what I'm trying to do anyways. So wipe most of it off, and then I'm gonna try to keep my hand flat so you can actually see. Because sometimes my fat hand gets in the way, and then all you see is my hand and not the picture. There we go. And I just, I did it on an angle, so it's raining on an angle here. Now, if you notice, I got these kind of blobby white spots, and I could leave it, but I'm a perfectionist, so we're not going to allow that to happen. <laughs> um, but I, I'm going to go in and kind of, here, let me just add a little bit more rain. There we go. And so what I could do, I could just leave it because I might put something there anyways and just cover it up. Or I could bring my clouds down and cover that up a little bit. Um, it's it's like not a huge deal. It's just, just the way it worked out. So when, when things like that happen, you just have to work with it. That's like uh, what Bob Ross said. You know, it's a happy little accident. It's not a mistake. It's like, oh, well, what can I do with this now? Okay, so we've got our clouds. We've got our rain. We've got our background. I'm wondering, it might be fun to maybe add um, some puddling down at the bottom. So let me see here. What could we do? We could do, I'm going to stick with my colors I have here. And I think I'm just going to have a little bit of fun with some texture and see if I can get um, kind of a, a puddle look. So I'm going to take, I'm going to do my um, round brush again with a little bit of white paint. I think I'll stick it in some blue as well. And you know, let me test it first. So I'm thinking I might do like maybe some little swirls. Sometimes if you're not sure and you don't want to do it on the painting yet, you could always test out something, you know, on your palette or something else. Or maybe I'll just add, I kind of like this, where I'm just kind of going back and forth using the round brush and just kind of adding in some lighter and darker areas. Maybe just, I just want it to stand out a bit. So let me try that. I don't think I'm going to do the swirls. We'll see. I did add a little purple in here too. Let me see how the purple looks. Ooh, I do like that purple. So maybe a little bit of the purple, just because we might be getting a reflection from the cloud. I don't know, have you ever looked down into a puddle. I used to do this when I was younger. I would look down into the puddle and you know you can see a reflection of of the world above and I always you know imagined like what if you could jump into the puddle and you know go into that other world that you see down there. It's like a mirror of this world. So that was you know young me. I had quite the big imagination. So I'm just sweeping. I have just used a round brush. You could also do with this with a flat brush, like we did at the beginning. Just sweeping some color in there. A little bit of white. A little bit of purple. A little bit of blue. Sweeping it back and forth. And we've got a little, I use the word little a lot, um, just kind of a horizon here. This is all kind of in the background, and then this is more in the foreground, closer to us. So let's bring that in. Do, do, do. Maybe I'll put in blue. See, I'm just kind of playing around, seeing what kind of different shade variations I can get, the different hues here. Shades is usually if they add black. I'm not adding any black. I don't want it to turn super dark on me. Okay, so far um, we have our clouds, we've got kind of our background going on, and then we've got this water down here. 
Um, I'm wondering if I do add a touch of black, how would that look? Maybe just a little bit of gray in there. Just a touch. And that some white on the brush is kind of getting in the way, but I'm just going to blend it in. And then I am going to add a little texture. I'm going to take some of the blue, and I still have a little bit of white left. And I think I am going to do a little bit of a swirl here, just to see if I can get maybe some rain drops you know how they make ripples of course there's a lot so honestly if this if it was raining this much I suppose we'd have lots of little splashes here so what if we made some little splashes in this puddle just kind of because this looks this looks like a real downpour here let's just do some splashes throw some water up there and I'm just taking the brush and kind of splattering it around adding some texture and this is me just playing around. This is what I do when I paint. You know, I, I kind of have a plan in my mind about what I want to do. And then I play with it. I play with the paint. See what, see what I can come up with. Now, if I wanted to make this super realistic, you know, I might want to look at a photo of um, splashing water or something like that. But I don't really want to. I just want to have fun with this. So I'm just going to add this texture down here. So we've got our little puddle and just all these little splashes. There we go. Okay, how are we doing on time? Ooh, still got 20 minutes. So I think let's do this. I am going to add a little cloud up here only because well, I could put, I'm thinking here, I could put my little umbrella, I was going to put the umbrella on the right side, but honestly, the way the cloud is, I could just as easily put it on the left side. Maybe I'll add a little over here. That's kind of a dark purple. I'm running low on white. I might have to bust out the white again. There we go. And brighten it up so it matches the others. So I kind of covered up that one little area. And then let's see about... We're still a little wet here, so I'm going to pull out the blow dryer and um, hang tight. It's going to be a little noisy, so I apologize for that, but um, Facebook Live just doesn't it doesn't have a mute, unfortunately. I tried unplugging my microphone once, but that didn't work either, and then it almost threw me off the live, so you're just going to have to bear with the sound. Sometimes if I use screen, um, what is it? screencast or something like that. That has an actual mute option, but this is not. So please bear with me. It's going to be noisy for a second. dry here and I'm going to mask in um, a little umbrella and a person and when I do masking what I mean is I'm going to use some white paint and kind of figure out the shape and how I want to do this and then I'm going to cover up some of the areas of my painting now some people will you know draw something in first and then they will kind of paint around it sometimes I do that um, but sometimes it's just so much more fun to just do the background first. So a lot of times I'll just do the background. And I'm just going to use a round brush here, just a small one. And I'm going to draw with it like I would a pencil. So I'm going to figure out where I want my umbrella to be. And I think, let's see here. Just thinking of the shape of the umbrella. I don't really want my whole little person showing. 
So what if we did, I'm just kind of painting the bottom edge of the umbrella here. So it's got all those little bumps. And then I'm going to bring this top part around. So I'm just kind of painting where I want the umbrella. This is very similar if you watched my kite painting. This is what I did with the kite. I did the background first, and then I kind of painted in where I wanted, you know, my focal point. So as much as I love the clouds, they're not really the total focal point of this. And we're doing lots of blues here. So for my focal point, I'm going to pick some contrasting colors for the blue. So this little person here, let's see, they're kind of hidden underneath the umbrella. I could even, you know, kind of draw their body where it would be. So they might be under there. And then, you know, they're holding that umbrella. Maybe they're wearing a rain jacket. Let's keep the shape real simple. This is not like a realistic portrait. This is just a fun little drawing, fun little painting, I should say, paint drawing here. And then, of course, you've got to have the rain boots, right? So we're going to have some fun rain boots here. Let's just paint that in. Now, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, I can't even do that with a pencil, how am I going to do that with a paintbrush? Well, you could do it with a pencil first. Or, um, you know, this is just something, I'm just messing around here. So it's not like this big technical thing. You could, you could literally draw a stick person to get this shape. Um, I should have showed you here. I can show you right now. So let's pretend this is a stick person. So here's the head, right? Here's the body. There's the legs. And then you just fill out around that. You got the little person here. They're holding, maybe they're holding the umbrella up here. Maybe the umbrella's coming down like that. So there we go. There's our little stick person. And that's a really simple way to draw, actually. Just draw a stick person and then fill it in. So super easy. Now this little person, their head and stuff isn't going to show, even though they're actually kind of cute. That would be kind of cute with that little hat. Maybe I'll do another one with a hat. Now I'm going to finish masking this in. So I'm covering up the background with white. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to paint this with a different color. I want to do some very bright colors on here. But if I go and try and paint yellow right over my dark blue background, um, that background is going to show through because yellow is just so transparent. And you might be thinking, well, what about white? Why doesn't it show through white? I don't know. It just doesn't. It's like the primer layer. If you paint a room, you know how you got to do the, the layer of primer. So that's what this masking does. It kind of just creates a little primer. It primes our palette so that we are ready, or not our palette, our... Um, canvas primes our picture here so that we can paint it another color without a bunch of blue showing through. So I'm going to do this. We got their little body here. Got the legs. Kind of a fun, cute little painting. There we go. And maybe they're holding on to it right there. So we might do just a touch of an arm there. Very simple body shape, okay? All right. Let me smooth this out. I don't, I'm not doing the masking super thick because I want it to dry so I can paint over on top of it. Let's get those in a little bit better. Okay, so that's good. I'm going to blow it dry again, so bear with me. Before I do, I'll just say once again, this is Rose from the Painted Toad, and we are painting um, a little April showers picture here. We've got some clouds, we've got some rain, a little person with their umbrella, and I'm going to blow it dry, so you're going to hear lots of noise again. Here we go.
dries super fast. When you do a thin layer like that, it dries so fast. It's very, very nice. Okay, so because I have such um, cool colors in my background, cool colors are always our blues, our purples, our greens. We don't have any green, but we got a lot of blue, purples. We got some gray and black back there. Um, I want to really brighten this up and, and make our little person here a bit more sunny and bright so that they stand out from our background. If I do a bunch of blue, um, it's just going to all blend in. It's not going to look very interesting. So you'll notice a lot of artists will, you know, use contrasting colors. We, we call them contrasting. They're different. But when you put them next to each other, they look really good. Okay, so let's get out some warm colors. And I think, let's not be too predictable here. If I get too predictable with my colors. Let's do some bright orange. So orange and um, blue are complementary colors. They're right across each other on the color wheel. You can tell as our teacher. <laughs> I gotta tell you all these interesting details, but it is interesting. So they contrast. They're like exact opposites. But when you put them next to each other, they look really good. If you mix them together, Sometimes they'll turn something brown. Now that can be used to your advantage depending on what you're doing, but most of the time, um, you know, you like them next to each other. So I'm just going just with a real bright orange. It's just um, cadmium orange hue. So any, any shade of orange, and honestly, you don't have to follow the exact colors and things that I'm doing. You know, you can always pick colors and shades that you like, different hues that you like. So if you go to the paint aisle at the craft store like, you know, Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that, um, just look at the paints and pick the ones you like. You know, if, if you like a certain color, you can get that color. I do a lot of color mixing, but it's convenient and nice to have colors that um, are already pre-mixed for you. Especially if you're, you know, not one that paints a lot and you're not too sure about color mixing and things like that. It's nice to just get one that's already pre-mixed for you. You can pick the colors you like and just buy them straight up from the bottle. Alright, we've got some orange. A lot of times I'll do um, my lightest colors first. Like I could have done yellow first, but I decided to do it this way. Because I wanted to. It's my prerogative, my painting, right? Okay, let's get some really bright yellow. Because that's another warm color. And we can do more than just the warm colors. I got some on my finger here. And I'm checking the time. We, I probably won't have time to finish this video. I'm going to go almost till 7. If I don't finish, I'll pop back on later and do that. So if you're watching and you want to see how this turns out, um, I will pop on at 7.30 to finish the painting. And then I will upload it to my YouTube page all as one painting with no interruptions. So I just knew if I didn't get on here and paint, I might not do it tonight. And that's what happened last night. I was too tired and I was like, oh, I don't feel like doing a live. So... Here I am. I am here to do a live for you. I'm not wimping out tonight. And getting the painting halfway done and telling you that I'm going to come back and finish it means that I have to do that. So it's kind of like you have to hold me accountable. Make me come back and finish it. You can even see here, maybe, I don't know if you can see it from your view, but with the, the yellow there, even with the mask, I can still see a hint of blue wanting to come through underneath where I could see it. So I might do one more layer of yellow later, but for now, this first yet layer is just fine. Okay, next, let's see. Um, instead of going right into green, I'd kind of like to get a real pretty bright green. So I have, I think there's a little bit, I might be able to get a little bit of this left. This is cadmium green. But like I said, any shade of green you like. But I want to make a little bit of a lime green. So, to make some lime green, because I don't have any straight up out of the bottle, 
I'm going to take my darker green here and I'm going to mix it with my remaining yellow. And I want to get kind of an in-between green and yellow colors. So I get like a springy, bright green. Just like that. Can you see that okay? Sorry if I didn't have that up where you could see it. But I'm just, I just mixed some of the green with the yellow. I don't need a ton. Once again, I'm you know, using a small painting here. We don't need... 20 tons. Now, um, I do. There, I did catch a little orange on this, and I really don't want the green and orange to mix. So I'm going to rinse that off. If I hadn't mixed with orange a little bit and had just the yellow on there, I would have just gone straight on there. But orange and green, they don't like each other. They don't like to mix very well. So we're just going to do this. Now my green is very thin, so I probably will have to do two layers of green. And I find, this is what I find with purple and green, they tend to be thinner paints. And I've tried a, diff, a bunch of different uh, brands of paint. So that's just something that I find with purple and green. I don't know why that is, but they just tend to, maybe because they're um, a mixture of two other hues, you know, maybe it's something to do with that. I don't know. I should look it up sometime. Maybe I'll look it up and I'll have the answer. The next video I'll say, this is why <laughs> purple and green are always thinner. Or maybe I'll find somebody who's found the perfect paint. These are just cheap little paints too. If I had, you know, um, if I bought thicker, more expensive paints, it might be better. But you never know. Sometimes it isn't. And then it's like, well, that was expensive. I could have just could have just used the cheap stuff. I just need two layers. All right, I've got that bright green, and I'm going to have to end right now. So I will be back. I'll be back at 7.30 to finish this, but I have to pause and uh, meet with my math student and then uh, do a little math, and I'll be back. Okay, so if you're joining me, this is Rose from the Painted Toad. We're going to finish this little painting in a little bit, so I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Hey there, it's Rose from the Painted Toad. I'm back. Uh, just finished working with my student. We did some geometry. And uh, we're going to finish the painting now. Okay? So, if you're joining me, we are finishing April showers. And first painting, if you caught it, or you can go back and watch it. We did the background. We got the shape in here of the little umbrella. And we, we left off with painting the umbrella. So, my paint is all nice and dry, and while it's dry, I'm going to do an extra layer. And uh, I think you can see here, let me zoom in a little bit here and get this reposition just a tad so you can see everything. Back it up just a little bit more. Okay, there we go. I think you can see, I don't know if you can tell on here, but remember how we did the masking? Um, when we did the masking, I told you we were trying to hide some of that blue, and you can see with this yellow, you can still see some blue cloud coming through there. So while I have my paint, actually my yellow and stuff is still wet here, because we've only been away for three minutes, I'm going to come back in here, and I'm going to try to paint this yellow. If it doesn't work, I might have to mask it a little more. We'll see. And then I'm going to do my orange as well. I'm going to do a second layer on orange. I'm just doing this because I can do it before my paint dries. And uh, it's dry, so I might as well. Might as well do it while it's dry. I will do the, um, the green in a minute, but instead of that, I'm going to jump into, well, let's see. I'm going to do... Yeah, I will do the green. I'm going to do light green, and then I was going to do the darker green into maybe some blue, maybe some red. Maybe I should do red as the next color. I had to think about it here. I've got just enough of my bright green left to do a second layer. Remember, that went on a little thin, so I'm going to fill that in. Yeah, 
There we go. So we've got our bright green. And I can do two more colors. I could do blue and purple, but if I do the blue and purple, what's going to happen is then I'm going to have more of the dark, um, cool colors that's going to blend in with my background. So I think what I might like to do is um, maybe add, I could try, let me try a darker green here. Uh, nope, I don't really like that. So I'm just going to take my finger because it's still wet. Just pull it right off of there. See how I did that? Sometimes you can do that or you can do it with a wet paper towel. It's an easy way to fix mistakes. I don't like the dark green. I'm going to try some red. Now red and green are complementary colors. And so, make sure that's, yeah, that's dry. I don't want it to mix into my red layer that I'm going to do next. Because I want to keep this little umbrella brighter. I want it to be brighter. I don't want it to be super dark. Because my background is already dark. So we want some contrast. So I've got a nice red here. This is, um, Naphthalene Carmine. We'll just say it's red. So pick a red. And of course, if you're painting this on your own, you can do any colors that you want on your umbrella. It doesn't have to look like my umbrella at all. You can do your own thing here. I'm going to use the edge of my brush and just kind of map out so I can get to the spoke of that umbrella. And then I can come along here use my flat brush hopefully you can see you know let me angle my hand a little bit better so I'm just bringing it down the side just like this so there we are And I may have to do two layers of red. I'm not going to worry about it right now, though. I'm just going to fill this in. Now, I could do a, an entirely different color. I could do a different color next. Or I can continue back in and do my pattern. So, in sticking with the uh, warmer colors, except for our green. Green's a cool color, but we've got the orange, the yellow, the green, the red. I could do kind of a magenta over here to keep it warmer, or I could come back around and do my orange. So maybe there's orange on that other side. Maybe it's a repeating pattern. Let's try orange again, um, and I might change my mind. I don't know. We will see. So I'm rinsing out my brush here. I'm going to do some orange over on this side again. sure I get my hand angled here so you can see. It's tricky doing these videos because I'm actually looking at this sideways. So, you know, ideally I like to paint right in front of me, but when I'm trying to show you something, it's better if I do it from the side. So you can kind of see what I'm doing with my brush and where everything's going here. And if you're joining me, this is Rose from the Painted Toad, and we are finishing April showers. So if you caught the first video, this is the second half. And if you didn't, you know, you could watch this one and then go back and see how I did that background in the first one. And I will post the whole video on YouTube, so I will have both parts together as one video with no interruptions. getting that corner there. Alright, part of my hand here. Sometimes it's just easier to get that paint where I want it to go instead of working from an angle. Okay, 
so I like that. I think that's super bright. I like the colors. I'll kind of bring this in a little bit here. I think it's looking really good. This is still showing through here. So I, is it still wet? It's dry. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add another layer to that white just because that blue, even though I masked it, that blue still wants to show through. So maybe this is one that would be better if we drew and painted around the umbrella, especially if you're going to go with yellow. And sometimes you realize that afterwards. And that's okay. Oh, I do have white. I'm like looking around for the paint. I have it. So I'm going to just touch this up again with some white to mask that stubborn area that wants to show the cloud underneath. We don't want to see you cloud, we want you hidden. There we go. So I'm going to leave that like that and let that dry. We'll come back to it and touch it up in a minute. And then, um, I was thinking for the coat or the boots, I was thinking of doing a bright color with those too. So I'm thinking our coat might be cute if it was bright yellow. So I'm going to go over this area one more time because of how stubborn the blue is wanting to show through my yellow part of my umbrella. I'm going to do an extra masking layer. I'm just adding one more layer of white so that when I do go over this with yellow, I won't have that same issue where the, the background's wanting to show through. So we'll kind of do this. There we go. And while I'm at it, I might as well just go over the boots and stuff too. Okay, so that's going to need to dry. While it's drying, I'm going to think about what other little things I can add in here. Um, I'm going to bring this red up just a touch so it's coming all the way to the top of my umbrella. Same with the orange. Bring it up to the top. And I, I tend to be a perfectionist, I'm a little fussy, so, you know, honestly, you don't have to be so fussy with details like that. That's just me. I'll mix this in just a tad, bring that up there too. There we go. Okay, I'm going to pull out the blow dryer, so please pardon the loud noise. But I want to dry this white layer so I can start adding the color and, and finish out my design here. Okay, if you're joining me, this is Rose from the Painted Toad, and we are painting April Showers, the second half of April Showers. And what did I do with my paintbrush? Huh. I just set it down. Oh, it's over here. Okay. I'm going to grab some more yellow, and I was going to do a yellow rain jacket. Let's do yellow rain jacket here. And get some nice bright colors to contrast with our background. Oh, 
This is not letting me show comments here. Let's see. Oh, okay. It should be okay. There we go. All right. So I did a second masking layer, and I'm going to add some yellow to my raincoat. So this is my little person. Walking through a downpour, really. This is quite quite a bit of rain. It's not just a little sprinkle here. We got a real downpour. And I'm just using a small flat brush, just painting that in. We might add some fun details on the rain jacket. Let me check up here. Is this nice and dry yet? Yes, that is dry. So I can mask in my yellow up here again. We'll see how that looks. Oh, it's going to look different, isn't it? All right, here we go. Let's paint the rest. I had a feeling that would happen. Let's paint the rest of this white. And then we will go back over and paint it one more time yellow. Not that dry. You can come down here, maybe do the pants. I've got a little bit of blue. Maybe this person is wearing blue jeans. I'll get some blue jeans. I'll use my dark phthalo cyanine blue. And we'll just, just a touch here. We don't need very much pant leg because we want those big tall galoshes. Right? Big rain boots. So where I live, I'm out in the country, and the one thing I learned that was different, it seemed, between the country and the city is there's so much more mud out here. <laughs> so my daughters, I've got four daughters, and we have to get like new mud boots every year. And those rain boots, they, they can, I can usually make it through like two, almost three kids before they get holes in them. So we are constantly going through rain boots. And when they were little, we lived um, in town. And so, you know, I always wanted those cute photographs of them wearing their matching raincoat and rain boots. It was just for cuteness. But out here, it is essential that you have mud boots. Otherwise, you just get covered in mud. So I think for our painting here, I think it would look really nice if we had some bright red galoshes to go with our look here. So let's do some bright red boots. Those are pretty. I'm going to fill that in. There we go. This brush still feels a bit damp. Let me dry it off just a tad more. We're painting these galoshes in. So when it rains here in the spring, usually May, I mean they say April showers, but we don't tend to get a lot of rain in April. I mean we do get rain, but sometimes it's cold still, so sometimes we get snow in April still. But it seems like we get a lot of rain in May, and especially in June, I feel like it's really rainy where we live in June. Um, and so, you know, our whole front area of our yard, it usually floods up there, and then there's a drainage ditch behind our house, so it's always, that's always fills up. I'm always afraid it's going to fill up so high and take away our chicken coop, but it's draining away. It does, it's never gotten that high, so we're not really, we're not in a floodplain or anything like that. It's just in the spring, everything's melted, and all that rain sits around until it has time to soak into the ground. There we go. Got these boots here. Rain boots. So I think that looks cute. Look how bright our little person is compared to that background. So now it's we've got what we call, I keep saying this, but we have contrast. We've got some 
warm colors set out against the cool colors and that that's what makes it pop and this is a very fun colorful painting just touching up some areas there I'm gonna do the rest of this yellow this should be dry now still might have to do an extra layer of yellow because it's fussy there we go Okay, that's looking better. Get this little corner here that I missed. A little bit more yellow on our rain jacket. I'm keeping this very simple. This is an example of one of the paintings um, that I teach. I have um, a pocket paintings group that I teach weekly. I have three different classes that I teach. And most of the kids in my pocket paintings are about age 8 to 13. And so we do fun little paintings like this every week. Um, and it's been fun because I can, you know, kind of paint with you and do my samples with you. And then I bring them the paintings finished so that I can tell them what not to do. I tell them all the time I paint it first because I figure out all the mistakes or all the things you want to be careful with so that it works out the way you want it to. I'm adding just an extra layer of the orange on here. Just to darken that in a little bit more. And I will do one more layer of the red. This My paints are a bit thin tonight, so sometimes if you get thicker paints, you don't have to do all these extra layers. But I'm enjoying just painting with you. It was a rainy day today anyway, so it's a good day to paint. Couldn't go for a walk tonight. Well, I could have, but it was kind of cold and rainy and miserable. And I did my yoga today, so that was good. I got in a little bit of exercise here and there. All right, I'm going to come back to my red. I might have to mix up some more green and do one more layer of green there because my green is looking a little shoddy. So another layer of red. Just bringing that in just so it's super bright and we can't see anything hiding or showing through from the background. I want to hide all those thin areas and just have a nice, clean, smooth look. There we go. And I'm going to do one more layer of the green, but I'm going to have to mix up more green because I ran out. And that was where I mixed the green and the yellow, so let's do that again. And I'm not too worried if it's not the same shade because I'm just going to paint over the whole thing anyway, so you know that's going to be like a bottom layer anyway. So take some yellow. I'm just going to set this aside over here. Take a little bit of this green in it. Mix it up so I can get that nice bright green. I just like the brighter color. We just need just enough to get an extra layer of the green. Go with my flat brush again. Make sure nice and dry. Anytime you're not using your brushes, you want to have them soaking in your water because if that acrylic paint dries on there, it'll dry on your bristles and then it kind of ruins your brush. So you always got to take good care of your brushes. Sometimes I'm a little bit lazy about washing my brushes and I let them soak overnight, but you really shouldn't do that. You should take them out and wash them as soon as you're done. 
I'm coming in here real close. Hopefully you can see that. I'm making a little bit of a shadow here, so I'm going to move. Can you see that okay? Yeah. You can see where my brush is going. Just use the advantage of the flat brush for that nice, smooth edge. There we go. I think that looks super cute and bright. I really like the way that looks. I'm going to add a little shadow here where this arm is. Nothing major. I just want a little bit of color under there to kind of distinguish the arm from the rest of the body. So I'm going to take, I'll probably just take a little orange here and a little yellow together. I'm just going to keep them on the brush. And then I'll just take um, my flat brush here and just kind of pull a little bit under this arm. It's a little darker than what I wanted, but you know what I'm going to do? Let's get some of that orange off the brush. I'm going to dip it back in the yellow. Got a drip of paint there. There we go. Dip it back in the yellow and just kind of bring that on top of there and blend that in a little bit so it's not so orange. And alternately, I could also, there we'll get a little elbow there. We'll just add a little color coming down here, maybe a little bit of shadow from underneath the uh, umbrella. There we go. Just add in some color. It's still really orangey over here, so here's a little technique. I want to get some of that orange off of there. It's still wet. I'm just going to kind of scrape it and pick it up with my brush and move it over there. And then I'll come back in with yellow and then blend that back in a little bit more. Just wasn't real happy at how orange that got. It happens. You know, you just kind of go with it and modify it if you have to. Don't ever be afraid to put paint down on your canvas. Don't be afraid of it. You can just um, paint over it. If you don't like it, paint over it. It's okay. You just let it dry and paint it. Like the, uh, a lot of times beginners, the mistake they'll make is they'll just keep trying to fix an area, fix an area while it's wet, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. The trick with the acrylic is to just let it dry and then go back and fix it. I painted a portrait this past week, and uh, I did, I think I did the face in the portrait uh, three different times. I painted, I didn't like it, didn't look right, needed to change it, and I went over it three times. And in between each time, I let it dry, and then I went back and, you know, changed it again. I changed it until I got it to look the way I wanted it to look. Going in the areas of the boots there. Oh, this looks so cute. Okay, so we need a little bit of something going on here. It looks like this person is just kind of floating in the water, so we need a little bit of depth. Um, and the best way to give it some depth is add a little bit of a shadow under there. So I think, let's see, I think my blue, there's my black here. I don't want a black shadow, because um, if I do too much of a black shadow, then it's it's not going to look right. We want kind of a, a dark blue shadow, so I've got a little bit here that's still too dark. Let me get some more blue, and I'm just going to use my dirty brush that had some black in it. That's not too bad. Let me add a little bit more blue here. See if I can get that to change. Uh, what if I add just a smidge of white? Let me see. Let's see how that lightens it up. Oh yeah, that brings it a little bit lighter. Okay, so I just need a little bit of this. And I want to get a little of the shadow going on under here. So I've got this shadow right there. That's the boot. The boot is lifted, but we can kind of still see the shadow coming down. And then we still have the body here. So shadow of the body. And then this boot right here is in the water. And I'm just going to kind of extend this shadow out because we've got the umbrella. We wouldn't see a real dramatic shadow because it's not very bright out. It's all cloudy. So we'd have just kind of a gentle shadow here. And you know what? 
if this was water down here, maybe there'd be a little bit of a reflection in that water. So let me kind of clean this brush a little bit. And let's add a bit of a reflection in the water. And this, we don't want it to be real dramatic. We want it to be subtle. So while this is wet, I'm going to go in and add just a little bit of red. So if you saw how I did that, so I'm just going to go in. I'm going to add a little bit of red here. Ooh, flip it over. It's not catching here. A little bit of red there. And this is, you know, doing some finer details. A little bit of red. That's a bit much. Okay. Just to get some reflection here in our water. And then maybe rinse that out a bit. I want a little bit of yellow because we have this yellow. And we're going to add, you know, kind of where the yellow body is. And it might turn a little green, that's all right. Sometimes the color is distorted when it gets down there. So we've got some yellow reflecting into our water. Got some puddles here. Just a couple more bright, bright strokes of yellow. There we go. Let's kind of blob it on there. Can you see that okay? Let me push that up. There you go. Now you can see a little bit better. And then, you know, I might see some of this, um, I might see some colors reflecting from the underside of this umbrella as well. So maybe we'll see, we'll catch a little bit of orange down here. Maybe just kind of swoosh it back and forth. And we'll catch maybe on the other side of the orange was more yellow. So maybe we'll have a little bit more yellow there. Maybe some more yellow. And a bit more red. I like that red down there. It gives us some contrast. Two, two, two. That was a lot of red. Maybe more than I wanted, but actually I kind of like, actually I kind of like the thick color. Okay, so here's what happens. You know, as I'm painting along here, I'm trying different things. And I kind of like how that looks. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back and I'm going to thicken up some of these reflections because I really like that bright reflection down there. It just really pops. I think it's fun. Makes it look like a rainy reflection. Super cute. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit thicker on the yellow. And let's just kind of thicken that up so it's real bright here. Let it be thick. I like that. I just like how that looks. Maybe over here we have some green. Let me do the orange. Let me add a little bit more orange over here. Thick orange. Where the orange part of the umbrella is reflecting. And then we've got the yellow. Um, maybe there'd be some more green over here. I'm going to add some more orange because maybe that's reflecting down there. I'm having a lot of fun down with our reflection. And then we need to get some green down there. If you're just joining me, this is Rose from the Painted Toad. We're painting April Showers, part two. And I am having fun layering some paint on here and just kind of creating some reflections. I'm going to bring that. I got just enough green left. There we go. Kind of mix that in with the yellow. That's fun. Okay. And I am going to do a little something different with the bottom just to make it stand out because I just like the way this thick 
coloring showed up. So I'm going to go right in with my bl thick blue here. I think I've got some left. And let's just kind of add some thick blue to this bottom. And just add it in here. Kind of dab it in there. Just having fun with this. There's no, I don't have like a major plan about how I want this to look. I'm just kind of letting it, just going with it. Fill it in, add some color. Get some more of this blue. Kind of bring it in there, maybe around some of these other colors. Let me get my smaller round brush here. And I'm going to add some of that thick blue. I'm going to actually get some more because this is getting, when it gets kind of dry, it, it gets a little too thick and then it doesn't want to flow. So I need a little bit of fresh paint, not very much, just to get the paint flowing. It's, it's getting a little bit gummy. I don't want to work with gummy paint. That's frustrating. So don't frustrate yourself. Let's add some of this in. And I'm being very careful. I'm being very gentle. I don't, this paint is wet down here and I really don't want it to mix. I just want to uh, add some color down here into these reflected areas. And we did that shadow, so I'm going to add some more blue in there, get it real thick like that. And this is what painting is all about. Do what makes you happy. Or creating art in general. Lots of different ways to create. The more you do, the better you get. You know, some people are like, I can't even draw a stick figure. I can't paint. Well, how much do you practice? How much time do you devote to painting? Anybody can learn how to paint. You just got to practice. You got to learn. Get a teacher. Have somebody guide you. I actually follow a couple people um, you know, who are more experienced than myself and I get different ideas and techniques from them and you know, that's that's how you learn. That's how you get better is by you got to invest the time, and that's what's going to make the difference. But you want, you're want you going to have to want to do it. You have to take the time to do it. If you're not going to take the time, well then no, you're not going to get any better. <laughs> Just like anything else, a sport or anything like that. You know, you got to practice to get good at it. taking a little break here. I'm just having fun with this, seeing what I can do. It's a bit abstract. This is not a realistic painting. I, in fact, I don't really like doing realistic paintings. Realism kind of turned me off from painting. I thought all paintings had to look, you know, photorealistic. And, uh, it kind of ruined it for me for a long time. I didn't paint for a long time because I'd get frustrated. I wanted it to look, you know, like a photograph. And I realized that's just not my style. It's not my style. I like to do textures. I'm a bit, you know, more abstract. I'm learning some um, looser painting techniques that I really enjoy. It's more my style. Alright, this is fun. Okay, so um, I feel like we should have a little bit of a splash here. So let's just kind of throw some some water splashing up here. Let that mix a little bit. So I'm just letting the blue and the white mix. I already had a little bit of blue on there anyways. Let me see, is this dry? Ooh, still a little tacky. I want to do a little bit of splash over that boot. 
but I don't want the splash to turn purple, so I'm going to add that splash in a little bit here. We'll just kind of do some splashing here. And maybe this has a little bit of rain dripping off of it because it just splashed. So let's add a little rain kind of coming off this boot here. Puddle. I'm just playing around. Okay, so I, do, I will add some more splash there to um, to this other. Maybe this one is like kicking some rain. Let's kick some rain out. So it's like kicking the puddle. We got the water kind of shooting out here because we just kicked it up. A little, little bit across there. There. I hid my boot a little bit, but that's okay. It's got water on it. It's rain. Yeah, it is so dry. Still a little tacky. Let's bleed on it again. Okay, so I've got a few finer details that I can add. Um, I'm going to come and pull out some. Let's do some black here. And I don't know if I want to outline this or not. I'm going to do the handle of the umbrella with some black. So do the handle. And we'll just kind of paint this. I didn't really have to mask that because black is, you know, it goes over the background. But it was just, I masked it so I knew where that handle was going to be. And I could also add some other little details to my umbrella. I think I'll do, since I'm working with black here, I'm going to do some outlining just a tad. We'll put the, that little spoke on the top. And I'm going to very gently use my brush. If, um, if you don't like uh, outlining, you can always use an ultra fine sharpie once your painting is dry. So if the thought of outlining something terrifies you, I don't always outline things, but a lot of times for these fun little paintings like this, I like to add a cute little outline. Nothing major, just kind of something to hint, little lines here. There we go. And I'm barely, barely touching the canvas with this brush. If you push too hard with the brush, then you're going to get a big old fat line. Which sometimes I can give a little character. Like you can see, my lines are not even here. It's giving it character. It's okay. I don't need perfectly even lines. Once you get over that, then you're going to enjoy painting lines a lot better. And if you're trying to get like perfectly straight, even lines, that's really hard to do with a brush. It can be done. Some people are very skilled at it, but I don't stress too much. I like when they're kind of broken up a little bit, gives them some character. And there we go. We'll add a little under here. And you could totally do this painting without doing the outline at all. It does not have to be outlined. You know, you could just leave it as a straight up solid colors. I just like, I don't know, I like to have the look of an outline on one like this. Now if I was going for something more realistic, then I probably wouldn't do this black outline. But this is one that I'll probably teach to my uh, pocket paintings group. And so this is a really good skill for them to learn learning how to outline with a brush. If you never do it, you're never going to get better at it. There. This is so cute. I'm really, I'm really happy with this. 
It's always good to be happy with your artwork. And if it's not, if you're not happy with it, what I usually do is I step away. That portrait I was telling you about, the one where I had to rework the face several times just to get it right, um, I stepped away from it. I left it overnight, didn't look at it, waited till the next day. Watched a couple YouTube videos, get some tips and tricks, and I, you know, I got up the courage and I attempted it again and it turned out better than it was. Was it perfect? No. Do I wish I could have done it better? Absolutely. But here's the thing, I'm like, portraiture is not my forte. I would much rather do these fun little paintings or do a landscape or something like that. Something a little looser. But, you know, like I said before, if I ever want to get better at it, I'm going to have to practice. So that's something that I will probably do in the future. Practice a little bit more. Just add in a little bit of outline on the body. There we go. And once again, this doesn't have to be outlined. I just wanted to add it. Because I like the look, I want to make it pop. I will go around the boots a little bit here. We got our splashes. I don't know if these boots, you know what, let me check. Is that red boot? Nope, still wet. Still wet at the top. I could pull the blow dryer out again. I might do that just so I can do my other splash and finish the painting. Because I don't want to keep you here all night or all day or whenever you happen to watch this. Okay. So I'm just going to take, let me do the blow dryer just for a touch. I'm going to do another splash here. It's bothering me. I want to get that last boot splashed. All right, there we go. Perfect. Now it's dry. Okay, so let's take a little bit of that blue and white again. Blue and white. And we're going to have a nice splash coming over the top of this boot. So just kind of throw in some little squirts. And I'm going to add a touch more on this other side here. Oops, sorry, just bumped the microphone with my brush. Let's just add some white just to distinguish and add a bit of spray. This very wet puddle. This little person's just kind of stomping right through the puddles. That's what you do when you got rain boots on. You just stomp on right through. Unless you get a soaker. <laughs> so, okay, this is going to date me, like age me, but when I was a young girl, um, I don't know, we never had proper rain boots. It, you know, I always had hand-me-downs. I had... Uh, four older brothers and sisters and one younger sister, so we always had hand-me-down boots. And it always seemed like the boots had leaks in them. 
they were leaky boots. So you get a soaker as soon as you put it on your, you know, and walked in a puddle, you'd have an instant soaker. So what my mom used to do, instead of buying new boots, <laughs> we would take bread bags, she would put them inside the boot as a liner. And so then you'd have bread bags in your boots. So I don't know if anybody else, if any of your parents ever did that for you, <laughs> if you had bread bags to line your boots. And that way if your boot leaked, it kept your foot dry. But then it always felt kind of weird because you'd have this, you know, dry sock and then it'd be all squishy inside the boot, but your foot would be in the bag and then your, your foot would be sweating because it was in a bag. It was kind of a funny, I don't know, it never worked out all that well, but we still went out and played in the, the rain with the boots and didn't bother us then. But thinking back, it was like, that was kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> didn't really work. All right, we got lots of splashes. I think that's fun, and I think, I think I'm going to call it a day. Um, I do feel like my background's a little bit kind of muted. Mm, I could do more with the background there just to kind of, you know, thicken it up like I did here, but I think I'm just going to leave it. If I do that, we might be here for another whole half an hour to an hour depending on my mood, so I'm getting kind of tired. <laughs> So I'm going to call that finished. Um, but like I said, you could go in and, you know, you could add polka dots to this. You could add stripes on your umbrella, different colors. You could put polka dots on the rain jacket or the boots or, you know, any all sorts of patterns and fun things you can do with this painting. But I hope you enjoyed watching it. And uh, I hope you enjoy your springtime. If you get out there and splash with, in the puddles. And uh, that's it for tonight. So this is Rose from the Painted Toad, just reminding you to be creative, be artistic, and get connected at the Painted Toad. Let me help you get connected to your artistic side. Okay, have a wonderful evening. See you later. If you enjoyed watching this video, you can find more like it on our YouTube page. Make sure to like and subscribe or follow us on Facebook at The Painted Toad.